Hey guys, I wanted to make a video on why fiber is bad for us or what the, um, I guess, most popular arguments are um, against fiber. And um, before I give my understanding on this, I think it's important to note that, like, you know, fiber isn't as bad as we probably make it seem. I mean, sometimes we talk about plants like, like they're like eating cyanide, um, you know, but clearly it's, it's not as bad as sometimes we think because people make it well into their hundreds eating plants and we are uh, we are omnivorous uh, I don't think there's any debate about that but I think we do uh, our digestion does more closely resemble that of a carnivore than of an herbivore so um, and clearly we tend to do really really well on an all-meat diet so um, all right so the main arguments against fiber uh, in this like in the carnivore community and uh, according to um, the Stone Age diet which is a book by Walter Vogelton that was extremely extremely insightful I'm gonna link that PDF um, uh, below the video is that well number one so fiber is completely indigestible by humans um, and as compared to an herbivore that's like a you know they they're supposed to just eat like fiber all day um, Herbivores have a completely digestive system than carnivores do. They have um, uh, a sheep, for example, has like four chambers uh, where they ferment the fiber that they eat. And they actually convert these fibers to short chain fatty acids. And then they're able to digest that and actually run on fat, which is very, very interesting. Um, something like 80% of all mammals actually run on fat. Uh, regardless of whether they're herbivores or carnivores, uh, the herbivores, because they go through this process of digesting, uh, of um, fermenting these fibers and converting them into short chain fatty acids. So that, that's very interesting uh, that most of the animal kingdom runs on fat. Very, very interesting. So anyway, so fiber to humans is completely indigestible. That's why when you consume fiber, you know, you get bulkier stools because, you know, your body isn't able to use fiber and you just poop it out. Uh, but we do have bacteria in our large intestine that can ferment some of these fibers and uh, uh, produce vitamins from it and short chain fatty acids just like herbivores do. Um, but compared to herbivores, it's like just very, very, in very, very small amounts. And not to mention fiber, because it's indigestible, it's also, it can be irritating to our digestive tract. And think about this, fiber, fiber goes completely undigested to us through the stomach, through the small intestine, and then once it gets to the large intestine, that's where we're supposed to have, you know, that's where our microbiome is. Um, we're not supposed to have bacteria in our small intestine, and we're not supposed to be fermenting anything in our small intestine. Uh, and, and that's why SIBO exists. SIBO is small, uh, uh, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and that happens when people are fermenting um, sugar and foods in their small intestine. The small intestine is supposed to be sterile. That, that's my understanding, or, or mostly sterile. So um, so that's that's number one, is that uh, plant fibers are indigestible to us. Some digestion happens by the bacteria in our colon. The rest is just, we crap it out. Um, another argument against fiber is uh, kind of intuitive to uh, understand. Um, when you think of a hose, and the hose has no obstruction through it, right? Water and fluids just flow very freely through it. But conventional wisdom tells us to throw, to put matter that like, that causes obstructions through the hose, right? So why would you expect you, why would you expect things to flow freely through the hose by adding grass through the hose? You know, that's just gonna create more stuff to push through the hose and more obstruction. Somebody like pointed that out in a YouTube video. I forgot who it was. I saw that a couple of months ago and I was like, okay, you're right. Yeah, that makes sense intuitively. Like why would adding fiber to our diet help move things around, you know? Another argument for consuming fiber is that it scrubs the intestinal lining, you know, it like scrubs everything clean. Um, but if you look on the flip side, digestion of meat uh, actually happens almost completely in the stomach and the small intestine. There's like nothing left to be uh, digested in the large intestine. And this is something that I read in um, Walter Vogelton's book is that a lot of carnivores, they can actually have their, um, their colons removed 
and they can still survive without a colon because the majority of their digestion happens in the stomach and in the small intestine. So for carnivores, it's extremely important to have a very high stomach acid, and that's something that we have um, in common with, um, with dogs. Our, our HCL, our pH is almost identical to that of a, a dog. Um, and, and that's really what kicks off the rest of digestion. How, how, as, how acidic your stomach is, is what eventually triggers a chain reaction of, uh, of re release of enzymes throughout the rest of your digestion. So how high your stomach acid is, is what enables pancreatic enzymes to be secreted to then neutralize the acid um, to continue um, absorption in the small intestine. And it's also what triggers bile production and bile release into the small intestine. Um, to uh, to di digest the rest of your food, so stomach acid is, stomach acid is extremely important um, for a carnivore. Um, so I think uh, I think that's it. Um, just the main argument against fiber is that it's just indigestible to us, and in order to I guess believe that, you have to first uh, understand that we are mostly a carnivorous animal, um, that our digestion mostly resembles that of a carnivorous animal. Oh, something else that's really interesting is that um, if you ever watch a dog eat its like natural diet, which is just like meat, um, so you have to ignore the fact that dogs eat kibble these days. If you watch a dog eat raw meat, it spends very little time chewing. Uh, they usually just swallow things whole. Sw they swallow like pieces of meat whole. Um, and that's, uh, that's actually the, the case for us. We don't have to chew meat almost at all, really. Like we can swallow chunks of meat and it, the entire, uh, the, the majority of the digestion for meat happens in the stomach and that's the case for dogs that's why dogs don't have to chew anything they just, they can just they have canines to tear um, to tear like meat and and, and uh, ligaments and stuff apart but once things are torn apart into bite-sized amounts and sometimes even bigger than bite-sized amounts they just swallow things whole and they let their stomach start digesting for them so um, I think that's it I'll keep this uh, I'll keep this short. I I would love to make a series on like that uh, the sheep digestion, the dog digestion, and then human digestion in like greater detail because uh, I feel like there's there's a longer explanation for this um, that's way more compelling um, and it's very very interesting. But I don't know that it would be like kind of boring because uh, these chapters in in the Stone Age diet they they. Uh, Walter, he goes through every single like enzyme and every single organ and how like they each depend on each other um, to outline digestion of you know these uh, the sheep, the human, and um, and the dog. But so I don't know if that would be boring or not. But I think that's fascinating. I'll link the the document below so that um, if you want like a better um, better explanation about all of this, you can read it. Um, that book just completely like. It, it was very, 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 very convincing um, that we should not be consuming plants in the amounts that we're consuming them. Uh, I, I can't possibly like unlearn what I've read in that book. It really like just gave me an existential crisis about nutrition and stuff. So anyway, all right, thanks for watching and check out the link below. Uh, I will see you guys on my next upload. If you guys have any idea for um, uploads, um, Comment below, give me some ideas. Like, I, I love that uh, the last two videos were um, subscriber requests, and um, sometimes I feel like I just like I have so much that I want to talk about that I don't know where to start, um, and I need to learn how to edit videos to like communicate this stuff more effectively. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.